Hey people, it's me, Ani, and my pronouns are Shun Hall, and welcome back to my channel for a new video. So, today's video is my worst books of 2021. I mentioned in my end of the year Q&A that I don't typically make videos about books that I didn't really like, but I decided to this year, because why not? First of all, taste is subjective, so if you really liked these books, that's great. I just personally didn't. And second of all, since I really did not like these books, and I won't be recommending them, I won't really go into detail as to what they're about. If you want to know what they're about, you can do that research yourself. Third of all, I just wanted to address the fact that yes, I should have DNF'd all of these books. And I don't typically keep track of the books that I DNF'd. I went to, into all of these books with much higher expectations. And I'll explain why individually, but I don't typically go into a book thinking that I'm going to hate it. You know what I mean? So anyway, with that said, here are my worst books of 2021. Basically, all of these books, I wished that they were better, and I continued reading them thinking and hoping that they would be better, but they didn't. They completely flopped. So anyway... Here we go. This list is not in any particular order because I was equally disappointed by every single one. So, without any further ado, the first book on this list is called An Emotion of Great Delight. This book was one of my most anticipated 2021 new releases. I had very high expectations for this book because this author previously wrote a very large expanse of C which I really loved. That book was literally so good, and this book was literally not at all. It was literally actually so bad. The concept and the idea seemed initially like interesting and cool and good, but then as the story progressed, it just got worse, especially at the end. Like, it ended so atleppily. It was really like she wrote an unfinished book and decided to publish it without finishing it. Like, she never wrote the second half of the book. She kept introducing all of these things, all of these storylines and characters, and all this stuff that had so much potential that did not live up to any of that potential at all. And she never gave anything closure. Listen, I understand that sometimes you have have to give a book an open ending but this book had way too much of an open ending because nothing was given the full potential of the development that it was supposed to and the worst part about how this book disappointed me is that since i read a very large expanse of sea a few years ago i know this author can do so much better so i don't know what the fuck happened when she wrote this book so anyway that's why I didn't like this book at all, and I should have DNF'd it, and I regret not DNFing it. But anyway, there you have it. The next book on this list is called What's Not to Love. I had really high expectations for this book because this awful duo wrote one of my favorite books of 2020, Time of Our Lives. So I thought that this book would be great. It has a great, like, academic rivals to lovers trope which i love actually i wouldn't say that i love academic rivals to lovers i love it specifically in today tonight tomorrow by rachel lynn solomon that book is great this book is not great because of the way that this enemies to lovers trope was executed that is its biggest fatal flaw the way that the romance was developed was so poorly executed. I mean, I was already not emotionally attached to either of these main characters. I don't even remember if this book had two perspectives or one perspective. But anyway, I didn't like the way that the romance was developed because they went from enemies to lovers literally so fast and so quickly that it didn't really give me time to ship them or to understand their romantic chemistry at all. They were so petty and so annoying towards each other that they literally annoyed me maybe it's because i never really went to high school since i was homeschooled but i don't understand how somebody can annoy you so much that you have a rival at all but that's just me i digress i didn't like this book at all because of the way that the romance was so poorly executed and again i know that these authors can do so much better although i will say that i've never read an enemies to lovers romance 
by them before. I think that all of their previous romantic stories have been friends to lovers. So maybe this is their first time in fighting enemies to lovers. Anyway, they should never write enemies to lovers ever again because this book was literally so bad. So yeah, there's that. The next book on this list is one that I probably enjoyed the most on this list, but it was still a big disappointment, and it is You Can Go Your Own Way. Again, I had really high expectations for this book, and this book was actually one of my most anticipated releases for the end of the year, because it's written by the same author who wrote Don't Read the Comments, and Don't Read the Comments is so good, but this book was not good. I would say that this book's biggest flaw was, again, the romance's fast development. It happened so much faster than I was really expecting it. The first half of the book, actually, was not bad. Like, it was good. It was establishing the characters and introducing me to these characters that I was somewhat emotionally attached to. And I knew that this book would have the first proximity trope in it, because that's what it said on Goodreads. However, that trope happened so much later in the book than I was expecting. I thought it would happen in at least the first third. And if I'm remembering correctly, it happened in the last third, which is why I think the romance happened so quickly for me. So I didn't really understand where the romantic chemistry was coming from. Don't get me wrong, I understood their platonic chemistry, but not really their romantic chemistry, if that makes any sense. So basically, I didn't love this book as much as I was really expecting to, but from the first two books on this list, I would say that I actually genuinely like this book more than like every other book on this list, but especially the first two books. Anyway, there's that. The next book on this list is called All of Us Villains. This book was actually another one of my most anticipated books for the end of the year, since Amanda Foody, one of the authors, is one of my favorite authors. However, like You Can Go Your Own Way, this book did not live up to those high expectations, and it absolutely flopped. I mentioned in a recent Reads video where I read this book that I will be reading the sequel next year. However, honestly, now, I don't think I will be reading the sequel because it's not really worth it to me. Anyway, I didn't love this book as much as I was really expecting to because I wasn't really emotionally connected to the characters. This book is marketed as the queer Hunger Games, so I knew that these characters would be competing in some sort of like magical, fantastical tournament to the death. So I didn't really spend time becoming connected to the characters because I knew that their demise or their death would be coming soon. So what's the point of being connected and attached to a character if you know that they're going to die? Does that make any sense? I hope it does. Anyway, so with that in mind, I don't really care about any of the romances or any of the alliances or anything that was happening with the characters. Like, I kind of cared about what was happening to them, like the world building and the plot were like somewhat well developed Honestly, to me, the writing kind of felt messy, and I think these authors are better off writing individually than writing together. Sometimes when authors band together, their writing is amplified. But with this duo, I felt like the writing did the opposite of being amplified. I forgot the antonym for amplify. So anyway, basically, this book disappointed me, and I will not be reading the sequel anytime soon, or at all. The next book on this list is called Rule of Wolves. I know I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I don't typically go into a book at all thinking that I'm going to dislike it, but honestly, for this book, I had really low expectations because if you didn't know, this book is a YA fantasy sequel to King of Skulls, which was my biggest disappointment of 2019. And honestly, I kept forgetting that this sequel existed because when I read King of Skulls and when I finished it, I immediately put it out of my mind because I didn't really like it that much. So as a result, I had really low expectations for this book. So anyway, with this book, I didn't love it as much as the general consensus because, frankly, I don't ship 
any new romances that happened in this book. Don't get me wrong, they're well developed and objectively great, but subjectively not so great. I've never shipped Soria and Nikolai together. I love them individually as characters and as people, but together I've never seen the romance. The romance does not give me any buzz or anything like that. So, didn't love that. I knew that it would end the way that it did, but I didn't love it. You know what I mean? As for Nina and her new romance, like I mentioned, it was great. It was well developed. I just didn't love it that much. So, that was a downfall. And also, one of the other things that I didn't like about this book, I don't really remember. Those are the two main things that I didn't really like that much. And I think that this duology is the worst of the Glutiverse books. So, anyway, like I mentioned before, I had really low expectations for this book. This book ended up being exactly what I expected, unfortunately. So, I don't recommend it. I don't really recommend this entire duology. I only recommend reading the original Glacia trilogy and the Six of Crows duology. So, yeah, there's that. The last book on this list is called Concrete Rose. When I was putting this list together, I honestly forgot that I had read this book because first of all, January of 2021, when I read this book, was so long ago. And second of all, this book was literally so forgettable and I honestly think that she shouldn't have written it at all. Don't get me wrong, objectively, I guess I understand why people like it, but subjectively, absolutely not. Maverick was never a character that I was really interested in from the hate you give, so honestly, I think that I read this book due to FOMO and not really for any other reason, and honestly, I shouldn't have. I should stop reading books due to FOMO. That's the lesson learned here, because this book was not really that good. I thought as I was reading it that I would become emotionally attached to Maverick and everything that was happening to him, but I really didn't, because since I had read The Hey You Give, I kind of knew how everything would end, so that made the story kind of predictable to me, you know what I mean? Basically, reading this book reminded me of reading The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes in the sense that I feel like this author should not have written this book at all. So anyway, with that said, I really don't recommend this book and I only recommend The Hate You Give and On The Come Up. And frankly, I think that On The Come Up is superior to The Hate You Give. But anyway, there's that. So in conclusion, those are some of my worst books of 2021. Honorable mentions, honestly, were not my problem and she drives me crazy, but retrospectively, I realized that there were some elements of those books that I genuinely did like. But anyway, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I don't typically make videos about the books that I didn't like because I'm not one to complain about books. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if this video is going up before my 2021 reading wrap up, but I don't include every single book that I've ever read in my recent reads videos. Some books are literally so bad that I just don't talk about them in recent reads videos. So as a result, I don't typically make videos that frequently about books that I didn't really like. So if you liked this video, let me know if I should complain more often on booktube about the books that I didn't like. But anyway, another thing that I mentioned in the beginning of this video is that taste is subjective and if you really, really like these books that's great for you i just personally didn't so yeah we all have different tastes and that's okay if you like this video please don't hesitate to give it a big thumbs up comment down below the pineapple emoji if you made it all the way to the end of the video thanks for watching subscribe to my channel if you're new and i'll see you in my next video bye